Amen. <clears throat> we thank God for our announcements this morning. There's a couple I want to reiterate to you again about the first fruits. First fruits are indeed, it is a biblical principle that God instituted in the Bible. And I think that anything that God does, that he continues to do, we should be doing it also. Amen. Remember, it's one week's salary. And we give that to the Lord so that he can bless the rest of our year to our finances or whatever we may need. Amen. Um, I believe that God is going to do an absolute turnaround in finances. Glory to God. So if you're making $12 an hour, you're going to be making 24 Amen. You're making 30 you can make $45 an hour. Is there anything too hard for God? Y'all looking at me like, huh? Yes, God can do the impossible. Amen. Now, here's the catch is that he may not do it when we want him to do it. But he does it on time. Amen. I promise you, if you would just believe, trust him, it's going to work for you. Amen. And the next thing is that <clears throat> this month marks our eighth year in ministry. Can somebody help me celebrate for a minute? Woo! Amen. I don't want to, I don't want to minimize uh, this great feat in our lives. Amen. Because God has blessed us for eight years to be in ministry. Amen. God has been good. He's seen us through the ups and the downs, the good and the bad. And we're still here. Though we may not have all the members that we had when we started. Amen. And it's not about the members. It's all about God. And I know that where we're headed, God is going to truly bless this ministry. Amen. So those of you that have been here for a while, amen, we pray that they would just come on board so that we can get, get real busy in the community get real busy in our neighborhoods, get real busy in the state of Texas. I mean, whatever God have us to do, we want to get, get it done because, you know, pastor can't do it all. I can't hear nobody. I said, pastor can't do it all. I need help. Amen. So would you all pray for me? Amen. As I pray for you, pray for me that God would continually guide me that God would help me through situations that he would give me what to say to you amen hallelujah glory to God amen alright I want you to get your Bibles and I want you to turn in the Old Testament to the book of Job. Turn to the book of Job. Amen. Chapter 1. I believe this is a word for those that are here. Amen. I didn't know why God would put this in my spirit but only he knows and I'm going to do my level's best to minister this to you that it will be life changing in your walk with God amen because first lady and I we are we are very very adamant about you walking right with God amen we are adamant about that because you got to get into heaven. Yeah. And we can preach until we're blue in the face. And you still not walk with God. You're going to bust hell wide open. So I want us all to get in. 
Amen. I want us all to get in. Jesus Christ has already provided a way. And all we got to do is follow his instructions. Do what he asks us to do. But this morning, we're going to take a look at a story that we all are familiar with, but somehow, some way, we can relate to this story. Job, verse 1, chapter 1. Stand as we read the word of God. Amen. Job, chapter 1, verse 1. Amen. Job, chapter 1. Verse 1. I'm going to read it from the uh, common English Bible because we got to understand what is happening. All right. Just follow along. A man in the land of us was named Job. That man was honest. A person of absolute integrity. He feared God and avoided evil. He had seven sons and three daughters and owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 pairs of oxen, 500 female donkeys, and a vast number of servants so that he was greater than all the people of the east. Each of his sons hosted a feast in his own house on his birthday. They invited their three sisters to eat and drink with them. When the days of the feast had been completed, Job would send word and purify his children. Getting up early in the morning, he prepared entirely burnt offerings for each of them. For Job thought, perhaps my children have sinned and then cursed God in their hearts. Oh my. Job did this regularly. Verse 6. One day the divine beings or the angels came to present themselves before the Lord. And the adversary also came among them. The Lord said unto the adversary, where did you come from? The adversary answered the Lord, from wandering throughout the earth. The Lord said to the adversary, have you thought about my servant Job? Surely there is no one like him on earth. A man who is honest, who is of absolute integrity, who reveres God and avoids evil. The adversary answered the Lord, does Job revere God for nothing? Haven't you fenced him in, his house and all he has, and blessed the work of his hands so that his possessions extend throughout the earth? But stretch out your hand and strike all he has. He will certainly curse you to your face. The Lord said to the adversary, look, all he has is within your power. Only don't touch, don't stretch out your hand against him so that the adversary left the presence of the Lord. My God. Let me read these few scriptures and we're going to move forward. Verse 13, one day Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. A messenger came to Job and said the oxen were plowing and the donkeys were grazing nearby when the Sabines took them and killed the young men with swords. I alone escaped to tell you. While this messenger was speaking, Another arrived and said, a raging fire fell from the sky and burned up the sheep and devoured the young men. I alone escaped to tell you. While this messenger was speaking, another arrived and said, Chaldeans set up three companies, 
raided the camels and took them, killing the young men with swords. I alone escaped to tell you. While this messenger was speaking, another arrived and said, your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking in their oldest brother's house when a strong wind came from the desert and struck the four corners of the house. It fell upon the young people and they died. I alone escaped to tell you. Job arose, tore his clothes, shaved his head, fell to the ground, mm, watch this, and worshiped. He said, naked I came from my mother's womb. Naked I will return there. The Lord has given, the Lord has taken, bless the Lord's name. In all this, Job, didn't sin or blame God. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you briefly this morning from this subject. It's personal. Amen. Would you say that with me? It's personal. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for your word. We thank you for what you're about to tell us, instructions. We thank you for clearing up some doubt, some misunderstandings, and some wondering, wondering of our minds. We pray in the name of Jesus that this message would reach every soul that's under the sound of my voice. For those that are looking afar off Facebook, wherever, YouTube, wherever it, they may be, that they will be touched and changed by this living word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. Amen. Glory to God. It's personal. It's personal. Come on, somebody say it with me again. It's personal. personal. Amen. You know what it's like when things start getting personal. Amen. It seems like it takes a lot before you get to that point and you say, okay, now, it's, it's getting personal now. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's getting real, getting tough now. It's, it, this is personal. <laughs> Amen. Are you with me? Now, this story and the life of Job is a very real story. And it was placed in the word of God to teach his people valuable lessons that take place in the spiritual world and the real deal on material belongings. I said the real deal on material belongings. The Holy Spirit opens this story with the character of Job. He declares that Job was a perfect and upright man. One that feared God and eschewed evil or avoided evil. A very impressive character. God spoke about. Can I ask you this morning, what would God say about you? Lord have mercy, y'all quiet. What would he really say about you? Job was a blessed brother. He had ten children, seven sons, three girls. Job believed in being fruitful and multiplying. Mm -hmm. a man was very blessed by God to have such a large family we don't see very many large families anymore everybody want a, want a girl and a son and they're done <laughs> amen it used, to be a day, it used to be a day when, 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 when there was what, eight or nine of us you know yeah 13, 12 you know, 
Lord, them sisters show is quiet. <laughs> we ain't pushing out that many kids no more. <laughs> Amen. But Job was a blessed man. We are told that his wealth was enormous and it was unmatched by any man in the East. Listen, 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 sheep asses and a very great household. 7,000 Sheep. Has anybody ever seen sheep? Real live sheep? Can you imagine 7,000? Can you imagine a bunch of 50 or 100? That's a lot of sheep. This man got 7,000 sheep. <laughs> he had a huge ranch and farm and owned an enormous number of animals and servants which was a common way to measure wealth in the ancient world obviously he needed quite a bit of land in order to support such large herd you can't have 7,000 sheep in a little bitty piece of land what I'm trying to tell you Job was a blessed man Job had it going on. Like many of us, we feel like we got it going on. Everything's working. Everything cool. God is blessing me. And, and you know, I ain't got no problem. I'm chilling. <laughs> Hallelujah. Job had 7,000 sheep. sheep. Sheep were useful for both food and clothing. And in the ancient East, they were heavily relied on for both. Y'all heard of lamb chops? <laughs> Some of your clothes is made out of wool, right? So this man got lamb chops and he got wool. Ooh. And he had servants to take care of all of them. Job had it going on. I'm going somewhere, y'all just pray with me. Because Job owned so many sheep, he likely engaged in trade and commerce, therefore increasing his wealth. This was even more likely since he owned so many camels, a major source of transportation in desert regions of his day. Job had what we call Uber. Anybody need to go somewhere, go down and see Job, and you can borrow some of his camels to get to where you got to go. You got to pay your way, though. <laughs> Job had a thriving business. He was doing good, wasn't he? Hallelujah. Caravans of camels serve the same purpose as a trucking industry today. <laughs> Job had 3,000 camels. They were used to transport crops and other goods throughout the region. But camels were also prized for their milk and meat. Job, Job knew business. Job knew how to work it. And God blessed him with all of this. And he was doing good. Job didn't let this go to his head. He wasn't tripping with pride because he knew that God had blessed him. And look at us. We get a little old car, boy, our nose is woo, all up in the air. We get us a new, you know, piece of thread and we just woo, full of pride. God bless us with something new and we act like, you know, can nobody touch us. But Job wasn't like that. Job had 1,000 oxen, 500 yoke or pairs. This indicates that he was engaged in farming on a very large scale. Oxen were used especially for plowing and moving heavy loads. Even for operating machinery like grain or stone grits mills. Oxen had a job. Y'all seen no big old, big, big oxen? 
how they pull stuff. They be sitting on a plow and pushing them. Joe, man, Joe has so much going on. First, he got all these sheep. He got all these camels for transportation. He got all this milk business. <laughs> now he got oxen to help folk, you know, move stuff. And I'm called, uh, Job charged folk. He just didn't let folk do it for free. Like most of us, we let folk have a free ride. We let folk do what they want to do without any responsibility. Oh, y'all, Lord Herman. Oxen could also serve as food. There we go again. Job made sure you got some food. If you want some food, you want an oxen, you want some ox meat. How many of y'all ate oxtails before? No, oh, they're good. That's, that's some good eating right there, Lord have mercy. Woo! Glory to God. Job, watch this. He had, he had, he had, he had 500 donkeys. The Hebrew word for donkey refers to female donkeys only. The females may have been prized more than the males for their milk. There we go again. Job said, okay, I got some camel milk. <laughs> I got some donkey milk. I got any kind of milk you need. What's up? Come on, talk to me. Amen. What I'm trying to show you is that God had tremendously blessed this man. And everything was going well. Until, well, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me finish talking about this. Job was a spiritual leader in his family. And we need more of these today. We need fathers who, will, who are spiritual leaders, not just natural leaders, but spiritual leaders. The Bible says that, 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 that often he would pray for his kids. He would offer sacrifice, not for just some of them, not, 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 not just for Billy because Billy messed up, not just for Susie because she messed up, but he did it for all of them. Hallelujah. When's the last time you prayed for all your children? Brittany said, I ain't got none. Pray for him anyway. He might be coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> there are two small bits of information given will show us how deeply Job was committed to his family and to the Lord. He was a faithful father. First, Job's family was close. A fact seen in his children's celebrating special occasions together. Each brother took a turn hosting his brothers and sisters. You know, it's a shame how we can't come together and host our family. Somebody going to always act a fool. <laughs> Somebody. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't got no lick at your house, they mad. You ain't got no dope at your house, yet they mad or they'll come drunk or they'll come high. But these kids came together and enjoyed themselves. It's bad when we can't come together and enjoy ourselves. Amen? This one fact shows that Job and his wife had reared a loving and tight-knit family, one that cared for one another and enjoyed being together. Job's sons were careful to take care of their sister's well-being an act that was necessary in a male-dominated society of that day. Mm -hmm. Second, Job watched over and cared deeply for his children. He consistently sought the Lord for their cleansing and purification. After the children's celebration, he would, he would offer a burnt sacrifice for each child. Ten sacrifices at all. Do you, do you, could you imagine what really took place on one sacrifice? All the bloodshed, all the killing of the animals, that one sacrifice, cutting off different parts of the body to offer a real sacrifice one time can be, can be tiring. <laughs> It could, it, it could really, it could really wear you out. But Job was committed to doing one sacrifice for every child. Hmm. And some of us don't want to do nothing for our children. Feed them and then you go to bed. 
Leave them to their self. <laughs> Lord Jesus, help us today. Job did this in case. In case. He didn't know, but he said in case. They had cursed God or sinned in some way or another. All right. Y'all hear me? Lord have mercy. Because of Job's sacrifice, many individuals may be quick to suppose that the children's festivals were immoral or even wicked. That's not the case. But the Bible does not say that the social events were morally wrong or sinful. You can have a good time, come together and enjoy ourselves without a bunch of ruckus. You know how y'all come over my house, eat up all my food? I can't get no witnesses in here. But we have a good time. We sit around, we laugh and joke. Some people try to beat me in pool in my house. Some try to beat me in dominoes in my house. And I don't let them. And I know they're upset. But I still love them. Amen. But we have a good time. They may be riding down the street mumbling and grumbling. Yeah, pastor cheated me. But we had a good time. And we came together. Amen. Amen. Now, now y'all hear the music playing, huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so, so. Most likely Job simply understood that people can be careless with their thoughts, their words, and behavior when having a good time. His children may not have sinned overtly or purposely, but, but, but Job was like a godly father would be when he was concerned that his children had sinned in their hearts. Hmm. So he took extra precautions and offered burnt sacrifices on their behalf. This was a very, this was the very sacrifice that God required to receive forgiveness of sin. Lord have mercy. Man, that's awesome. We must recognize how Job presents a powerful example of godliness, a clear picture of a man who sought to honor the Lord in all he did. Although he was blameless and upright, he was human. Job was not perfect, not sinless. Nevertheless, Job lived a righteous and holy life. For the Lord himself declared that Job was blameless. Listen, Job lived like that and he didn't even have the Holy Ghost. Can we let that sink in for a minute? He didn't have the Holy Ghost like the church. Folks say they got it now. And they still act a fool. Mm. Okay, y'all didn't like that. Let's move on down. Job, in all he did, and as good as he was, he still had an adversary. Y'all, Y'all think everybody like you? Baby, you in trouble. You got an enemy out there. Somewhere. Whether it's in your family, whether it's on your job, or wherever. You, people don't even know you can become your enemy real quick. Because they don't like the shoes and the dress you got on. So Job had an enemy. He was blameless, but he had an accuser. Hmm. This accuser was the same scheming adversary of every believer. His name was Satan. The New Testament teaches us that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Surprisingly, but watch also that Satan stands before God. Wait a minute. The devil got access to God. And he ain't giving God a good report. He is accusing the brethren. That's 
that's why, saints of God, you got to be careful in what you do and where you go. Because the devil is a tattletale. <laughs> it ain't that God don't know, but he will accuse you. See, I told you Addis wasn't no good. Look at it. I told you Pam wasn't no good wife. Look at her. See how she smacked him upside the head like that? She ain't no good wife, God. Accusers. Why y'all laughing? Amen. I told you Brittany was crazy. I told you. You see how she flipped out at the party? She was at the wedding just cutting up. Something wrong with her. Just steady accusing her. Hallelujah. And the Bible said he does this day and night. <laughs> day and night. In this case, his target was Job. The conversation that now takes place is between Satan and God. And this conversation sets the stage for the rest of the book. What do you do? God drop your name on the devil. First of all, you got to understand when God drops your name on Satan, he does it for a reason. Not to hurt you. Because he would never give us more than we can bear. God knows what you can handle. And what he does, he's make the devil and what he really is, a liar. What am I saying to you? God is allowing you to go through certain things to make you. And that's why I named this message, it's personal. <laughs> Amen. It is. You think the fight is between you and your spouse or between your siblings, your boss, this fight started in heaven and it's personal. Amen. You can't pull your nine millimeter, your sword, and fight back. You got to get on your knees and fight. Amen. The devil will use whom he will against you. It's personal. And I'm telling you, one of his own tactics is, is to use the people that are closest to you. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your grandson who you love, your little pookie nymph, all that. He will use them. He will use them to bring you down because the devil understands and he knows you he been watching you he got intel on you and when he go before God he don't want to tell God nothing good that you've been doing he talks about Job he said yeah 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 he got all that but, but, but if you take it away from God, guess what? He going to you, curse you to your face. Watch what I tell you. Amen. I, I, I hope y'all are hearing me. I hope y'all are hearing me. Amen. So the conversation now. Behind Job's suffering lay or lies a spiritual battle. A cosmic battle. Conflict between God and Satan. A war was being waged in heaven and it would partly play out itself on earth in the life of Job, an innocent and righteous man. Did y'all hear that? It's being played out in the life of Job who was innocent. Baby, I come to tell you this war that you are in is being played out and it started 
in the heavenlies. <laughs> because the age old question, why do bad things happen to good people? Because the enemy wants to take you down. He wants you to renounce Jesus Christ. He don't want you living holy before your family, your children, your spouse, your co-workers, or wherever you go. He doesn't want you to reflect Jesus in any manner. Do you hear me? This is personal. Hallelujah. Your prayer partner can't deal with this. <laughs> Glory to God. The people around you can't deal with this. It's your fight. Your husband, he can pray for you and pray with you, but he can't take your personal fight. Lord, help me to preach this morning. So let me ask y'all, have you ever been coasting along comfortably in life with everything going well? Then, without warning, things began to crumble. For months, perhaps years, you have been relatively peaceful, stable, and happy. You were experiencing no major trouble or hardship. Oh, no. That's nobody.